Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa. I am the owner and artist at the Top Drawer RVA located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm also a Dixie Belle brand ambassador. I saw this beautiful chest at my local Goodwill a couple of weeks ago. Nobody was buying it because one leg was completely broke off. I waited for the sale day and I snagged this piece for half price. The solid wood cedar chest is in beautiful condition but needs some serious TLC. After fixing the leg, I decided I would sand down the top and see what I could salvage and then paint the base, but we ran into some problems here. The top was not savable. There was too many missing veneer issues along with broken corners and edges. So I sanded down the top as much as I could to give myself a smooth surface, knowing that this piece was going to be a 100% paint job. Let's start by adding some beautiful Would You Bend molding. Would you bend moldings are my favorite thing to add to the front of a boring plain piece. This chest is gorgeous, but it just needs a little bit more dressing up. So I'm going to apply this would you bend medallion to the front of the piece. Would you bend moldings arrive hard and rigid. What you need to do to apply this to your project is to heat up the backing of your would you bend molding. After heating it up so it becomes bendable and pliable, you add your wood glue and simply adhere it to your piece. You're going to need to use wood glue for this part of the project, making sure that it becomes one with the chest. I use some blue painter's tape to adhere it and make sure that it holds itself up. This wood you bend is actually pretty large and pretty chunky, so this tape will just hold it until it's exactly adhered to the front of the chest. You heat it up one more time after it's stuck on there just to make sure that it's going to be solid and stuck on where you need it to go. And then wait. After a few minutes, you're ready to go and you can paint right over top. And since this would you bend molding came in a package of two, I have one more left over for another project. So what's the plan for this beautiful chest? It's going to have to be terra clay paint. Terra clay paint is my go-to product for creating texture and covering any damages on a piece. Since this piece has so many little nicks and damages to it, using terra clay paint and a natural bristle brush to kind of stipple on my colors, I'm able to hide those damages and get the effect that I want. The plan is to build layers. Terra clay paint is amazing for building layers. You can reactivate it with water, pull back and distress. I started off with onyx and then moved in with desert tan. Adding in Prairie Dawn and Moonbeam. This is just my first layer. I know it looks a little bit scary. Don't worry, there is a method behind the madness. Anybody can do this technique. You're literally just pushing that paint down onto your project, creating little peaks and valleys and a textured surface. After waiting a short period of time for that first layer to dry, this is when I start to blend and paint. Using the same colors of terra clay paint, along with your spray misting bottle filled with water, you can simply blend the colors together. I like to create a cloudy finish, leaving a little bit of the darker tones in the recessed areas. I also added a little bit of chocolate from the Chalk Mineral line, just to give the edges a little bit more of an aged effect. I'm going to keep the drips and runs for a true grungy finish. You'll see as I move along the top of the chest how fast terra clay paint really does dry. Since it's a clay based finish with low VOCs, there's really no smell to this product and it dries quickly. You'll see when it dries, it gets a little bit lighter in value. Don't worry, when you seal your paint, it will come back to that nice deep dark color. I love to use water on my projects when using terra clay paint to create a true drippy kind of aged look. After the paint had dried, I wanted to seal this 100% with Terra Tough. This will lock in that paint so that it cannot be reactivated and I can get in here and start to play with some waxes and maybe add some mousse. You can use any of the waxes that you like over top of your Terra paint. I can use gilding wax or I can use a water-based Best Dang Wax. It's up to you. I like to use black in the edges with the gilding wax along with maybe some copper. But for me, I like to really get in with my gemstone mousse. 
And here's where I'm gonna share a little secret with you. That mousse itself is dried out and hard. This is actually a really kind of neat trick. I'm gonna take that hard gemstone mousse. It's a water-based kind of shiny metallic glimmer and I'm going to really wet it. By applying it with a brush and then spraying it with water, you're going to get almost like a shimmery effect to the front of your furniture. And since I'm mixing it with water, it's a lot less of a shimmer consistency than using the gemstone mousse in its liquid base. This piece had some fun hardware on the sides and almost like a copper base. I wanna keep the hardware as original as possible. So just to clean it up, I'm going to use my gilding wax in copper to hide any of the damages that are on the hardware. I still want a rustic look, so they're not gonna be 100% perfect, but they are going to look amazing. I'll also be adding a new keystone pediment to the front of the project. I found one from a local salvage place that I'm going to dust as well with the gilding wax to make it look the same as the original hardware. This is what I was left with. After I sealed my piece, I still had that beautiful, gorgeous finish, but I felt like it needed just a little bit more. I'm going to add a tiny touch of stencil to my project. By using my Best Dang brush and the same terra clay paint colors kind of just muddled together, I'm able to create almost like a ghost stencil. It's a shadowy effect that is more like an old wallpaper look than a true defined stencil. So by mixing some of the lighter colors and then just gently using a little bit of paint on a brush, whether it be your Best Dang brush or your French tip, you can gently apply the color in a faded pattern, kind of going heavier in the middle and then lighter towards the edges. I often do this in my projects. I get to a point where I think I'm done and then I look and I decide to pivot and change it up just a little bit more. I do like kind of like a, a heavy, gothic, dark look. I don't know any other way to explain this other than like a boho grunge. This look is not for everybody, but to me, it's one of my most favorite organic ways to paint. So by adding on all these little details, touches of shine on the edges, recycled hardware, it just gives it a really unique vibe that I just really like. After I finished applying the stencil, I actually did not seal it again. I don't really mind that kind of faded in clay paint look when it's dry. So the stencil is just a barely, barely baby touch onto this piece. So since it was sealed already with the Terra Tough, I am totally okay with just leaving this part of the stencil unsealed. When you're up close on this piece, you can really see the texture and the definition around the edges. That Terra Tough gives it a strong seal. That beautiful black gilding wax adds depth around that beautiful Would You Bend molding. When I put back on that hardware, it was complete. I absolutely love this piece. This broken and discarded old cedar chest that was missing a leg and nobody wanted because she was so heavily damaged now has a beautiful new life. She is ready to sit at the end of your bed, a beautiful place to put on your high heel shoes and get glam for the evening. What do you think? Are you on this whole boho grungy vibe? Do you like the deep and dark gothic look to this piece? Let me know in the comments below.